creation groans for the revealing of the sons of God. His holy invasion for a righteous revolution forged in his fire. Weaponized for warfare, roaring in his rest, and dancing in his reign. Glory to God. Welcome to all of my Cimarron family. I am really excited about our beautiful communion service. This is my first communion service. And it is called We Remember. And I'm really excited. And I'm going to wait. Actually, I'm a few minutes early. I will say, you guys, I am a little bit nervous because this is so new for me, what the Lord has asked me to do. So I just ask for your grace. I ask for your grace in the name of Jesus. And I'm just going to wait and see how many of you jump on. I have a little situation going on um, where I'm not seeing Facebook comments. So what I'm going to do is jump on um, my other device. So that way I can actually see and look at both comments on, on my YouTube community and also on Facebook. So let me pull this up and greet those who are coming on. Okay. Hi, Angela. Okay. You are coming on from Facebook. Welcome. Welcome. And Sweet Wolf from YouTube. Welcome. I am really excited. Happy Resurrection Sunday, you guys. I am excited. We know he has risen over 2,000 years ago, and he is the risen son. And my goodness, we are so, so blessed. We are so, so blessed to be in such a powerful, intimate covenant with Jesus Christ, our King of glory. Hallelujah. So again, you guys, I'm just going to wait a few minutes. I have a lot to serve you tonight in our beautiful communion service, just so you guys can see. I have here um, unleavened bread. This is the matzah, and this is actually what they use a lot in Israel for Passover. And so I have this. And for those of you that want to participate in our time of communion, as we take of the bread and the wine, which represents the body of Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ, I just really welcome you to join in and you guys will have time to get those things together so that we can all do this together. I also want to show you guys, um, not only, not only did the Lord speak to me to do communion with real wine, there is a reason for it. And this wine bottle that I'm actually going to show you guys tonight is not only going to be for our communion, but there is a powerful word from the Lord through this wine bottle that is literally from Israel. And this wine was literally bottled from 2018, so six years ago. And the Lord would never let me open this until today. This is very significant. So in our time of communion that we are going to embrace together as a family, as the body of Christ, I'm going to release a very powerful, potent word from the Lord that is for us now. As many of you guys do know that we are celebrating Resurrection Sunday. This is from the Gregorian calendar, which is in our nation, America, and several other places that actually celebrate um, Easter or Resurrection Sunday through the Gregorian calendar. But 
as the bride of Christ, as the remnant of the Lord, we know that we we are in harmony and we are in sync with the Hebraic calendar. We understand that the Hebraic calendar comes from the ancient ways, the ancient past. This is all about everything that was strategically and masterfully done through prophetic revelation and prophetic acts. So from the Old Testament. So we celebrate on the Hebraic calendar. So actually, you guys, April, April, okay, and I believe it's the 22nd through, if, if I'm not mistaken, the 30th, I believe, I'd have to double check, but it starts April 22nd, I believe, is when the Passover and the celebration of the resurrection, the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ is celebrated in Israel. But April is all about the new year. You guys, this is so wild. So get excited, okay? Because April of 2024 is actually when the year of the wow and the year of the now starts. So the new beginning, which is uh, in on the Hebraic calendar, which is called Adar and Nisan, on the Hebraic calendar represents the new beginning or the new year, which is spring, when everything begins to bud and blossom at the beginning of the year. And so this spiritually is our new year. It starts in April. And this is exciting because there are specific things that the Lord has decreed over his bride, over the remnant of God. And we are getting ready to step into it. This is why the Lord began to speak about hitting the reset button. We are stepping into the beginning of his new year, which represents our true 2024 beginning in April from the Hebraic calendar. So you guys, this is exciting. This is so exciting about the way that the spirit of God is about to move and blow upon his remnant. Woo! He is about to blow upon his remnant. The wind of the Holy Spirit the rain of heaven, that latter rain, that heavy rain that causes everything to break out of the ground. Glory to God. Spring to force it to spring forth, to force it to merge and forge ahead. This is so exciting because the wind of the Holy Spirit is about to blow the rain of heaven, the supreme rulership, the governing presence of the Lord. He is about to rain down and it is going to be powerful. Those things that God is basically saying right now, when I blow upon my garden, when I cause my wind to blow, when I cause my rain to begin to fall, what I'm going to do is I'm going to force things to grow. I'm going to force things to come forth by the power of my blood, by the anointing woo, that destroys every demonic yoke of the enemy. When it is time for what I decreed to come forth out of the earth, when it is time for it to emerge, when it is time for it to be established, oh, you better believe that I will cause my wind to blow and I will cause my rain to fall and I will cause my fire to burn up anything and everything that is standing in my way. Woo, Jesus. Okay, you guys, I'm getting excited. What I want to do is I want to give you guys opportunity to go invite some other warriors. Go invite, go uh, spread the news, gather others that need to be on here tonight. Because once again, there is a very powerful, potent word from the Lord through this wine bottle from Israel. and. Our communion tonight is going to be very sacred, very, very non-traditional. I will tell you, very non-traditional. Thank you, Jesus. Whoo! I want to also just pray. I want to ask the Holy Spirit to begin to just 
baptize me afresh and anew and baptize all of you afresh and anew just to receive what the Holy Spirit wants to say, how the Holy Spirit wants to serve all of us, everything the Holy Spirit wants to impart into us during this time of communing with the Lord, literally communing. And I'm going to share some beautiful revelation about that word communion. Several of you may know, you've heard it before. The Holy Spirit might have whispered it in your spirit, man, or you might have heard it from others. And it's so sacred because that word communion really means come union, come union, just like the word community, the body of Christ, come unity, come unity. Let's come and be united. We are one body. We are one body. We are one bride. We are one nation under God. Hallelujah. Okay. Let me do this. Thank you, Jesus. I want to welcome everybody that's on here right now. Joy of life. What a beautiful name. Welcome joy of life and Dylan Vicky, welcome. Lori, welcome. Linda, Martha, Joyce, Preston, Crystal Underwood, Emily Agape. Welcome, you guys. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. So what we're going to do, because we've got a packed night tonight. And for those of you that cannot stay for the full service that we have, and it's very different because obviously it's not in a congregation right now. It is just me breaking bread with you and serving you what the Holy Spirit has put on my heart to serve you tonight. Hallelujah. So if you cannot stay, you can always come back and join in and finish what the Lord is pouring out for all of us tonight. Okay. Again, I'm going to repeat this. I'm going to repeat this. So I do have the matzah, which is the unleavened bread which is what is what all the people in Israel usually use during the Passover, right? The Passover, the blood of the lamb that delivered them out of Egypt, glory to God. And then of course, I have wine from Israel, literally from Israel by the Judean hills. And this is so exciting about what the Lord's gonna have me speak over all of you and what the Lord is serving us. And... I am going to open this. Okay. So I'm praying that it doesn't explode. I'm really praying, but there will be some explosive outpourings of the Holy Spirit in 2024. So I'm telling you, the Lord said above all, we can think, ask, or even imagine Ephesians 3.20. We're going to experience exceedingly above and beyond what we could even ask or what we've asked the Lord. God is full of surprises. And so many of you have walked through such a long wine press, such years of a wine press. And the Lord is excited to serve you the new wine that is coming from his heart, that is coming from heaven because of your obedience, because of that selfless sacrificial love that you have in your covenant with Jesus Christ. Okay, that you have in your covenant with Jesus Christ. God has seen, He has seen the selfless sacrificial love that you have cultivated in your intimate relationship in this covenant made by fire through that long suffering, through that long suffering and that long wait where you begin to intertwine with the Lord, to come into a fusion, a oneness, a bond, a marriage. Hallelujah. To understand and unveil the mysteries in the heart of God that needed to be served to you because of your calling in Christ, because of the way that God wants to birth and establish his kingdom in the earth. Glory to God. So that weight from the wine press took you into places to experience and, and unveil these hidden mysteries that Jeremiah 33, three, if you call unto me, I'm going to show you and tell you great and mighty unsearchable things that you know not of. This is going to come out of partaking of my sufferings. This is going to come out of your spiritual Gethsemane with me. This is going to come out of our covenant that's made by 
fire. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to open up by starting here. You guys, there is someone that I am Facebook friends with. You guys may know her and you might not. And I'm hoping that I can introduce her at some point this year, possibly. But I reached out to her because listen to this. This is the first time that the Lord's having me do a communion service. And again, it's non-traditional. And this year, she came out with the most sacred, intimate, holy sound from heaven and song from heaven that is all about the communion. OK, it is called Remember, Remember Me. And it is so holy. And so she just released it on Good Friday. So she literally just released this on Friday. And it, the timing of this was so amazing. I had one of my clients send it to me and I listened to it and I just began to weep. I mean, I began to weep. The presence of the Lord was so weighty in this outpouring. And so I asked her if I could have her permission to share this with you so that you can partake of this as we embrace this communion tonight with the bread and the wine. Also, I want to say this is very important. So everybody has their way of doing communion. The only reason that I actually would never do a lot of communion with the, the wafer and the grape juice, I, I felt in my own spirit that I needed to go to a deeper place with Jesus. And I just, I never felt drawn to do that. And I realized why, because when we look in the word in Matthew 26, verse 26 through 28, when Jesus, when Jesus established that last supper with his disciples, there was something really amazing that Jesus said. OK, and it very clearly states that when he did communion, right, with the bread and the wine in the cup, he says, and I believe this is verse 28, he says, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. So very clearly, Jesus wanted to use wine. And why did he want to use wine as a representation of the power of his blood that would atone for our sinful nature, that would deliver us, that would heal us, that would bring restoration, that would establish a ministry of reconciliation and a covenant, an intimate covenant with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit three in one. Why did he want to use wine? It's very evident because wine is only produced through a great crushing. Wine is only produced through a great crushing. And that is the spiritual understanding of long suffering and unbelievable brokenness. And so that is why the Lord, after all these years, said to me, I want you to use wine. Now, how many of you actually use wine? I want to just stop for a minute and see how many of you guys actually do use wine in communion, in your time of, of taking communion. And then those of you, I'd like to hear from you, how many of you haven't really taken communion for a long time and you have more of a spiritual communion because you understand the power of his blood and his and and he's the bread of life your daily bread that you partake of when you worship him when you praise him when you are intimate with him in your prayer and conversation and you know just continually being surrendered to the lord to receive the instruction of the Lord, the direction of the Lord, the counsel of the Lord, to stay on your path, to stay in alignment with the path that God has called you. And that is so important. So, okay, giant, all of you said, I use wine. Okay, 
Thank you, Jesus. And of course, okay, yeah, I totally get that. So Pink says that, of course, children use the grape juice. Um, okay. Joy says yes for years. Okay. So I just want you guys to know why Jesus was saying to me, I want you to actually use wine. Now, what I'm going to talk about, I didn't even know. Okay, so we're going to go deep tonight and I'm going to pull this up. Thank you, Jesus. So the Lord said to me, okay, and I'm about to release a very potent prophetic word for the bride of Christ, for the remnant. And the Lord spoke something very, um, very just, it was so rich and it was so intimate. But he said to me when I picked up this bottle, because I had other bottles of wine from Israel, but he said, no, I want you to pick up this one. I want you to use this wine bottle. And he said, I want you to look up the name of this wine. Okay. And I'm going to share this with you guys right now. Okay. So the, the name of this wine is called Dri, Dry Maya or Dramaya. And it's D R I M I A. This is actually a flower. Okay. The Hebrew word for Dramaya is this is what it means. It means. It's a symbol of a new beginning. Okay, so it is actually a symbol of a new beginning. The first flowers of the Jeremiah usually pop up and bud and blossom in February and March. It's a certain sign that spring is coming forth. Now, the Greek meaning of this word on this wine bottle is pungent. It means strong powerful, burning, and penetrating. So it has such a strong flavor. It has such a powerful flavor that it actually gives you a burning sensation, a burning sensation. And the other meaning of pungent, again, which is the Greek meaning of the name of this wine, D-R-I-M-I-A, Dramai. I, I, I probably am totally crushing it, not saying the name right, the pronunciation, but you guys, thanks for your grace. Okay, so another word means penetrating. The word penetrating means to succeed in understanding or gaining insight into something complex or mysterious. So to gain greater discernment and insight in an area that was so mysterious and so complex that you lacked understanding. So this is so holy because there is such a message in what God is saying in the name of this bottle of wine from Israel. Now, on this bottle of wine, I'm going to read, I'm going to actually read the back of it. And it says, Dremai or Dremiah is about relationships between a mountain and the desert, man and land, earth and sky. It's about a promise, a new beginning, creation and fulfillment. This wine is made and it says 100% Cabernet. And then it gives the, the name and I'm just going to spell it S-A-U-V-I-G-N-O-N. These grapes were ripened on the hills of Yatir, Yatir, Y-A-T-I-R. Now the Lord said this is very significant because that name in Hebrew means this. It means preeminent, the finest, celebrated, transcendent, and supreme. Okay, so that word Yatir, again, this is where this wine is. The grapes were ripened on the hills of Yatir. And on the wine bottle, it says, Y-A-T-I-R, hills, Israel. Okay. So again, this name means, the fine. what is the finest? Like fine wine. It means what is celebrated, what is transcendent, 
and what is supreme. It also means surpassing in Hebrew, which means something that is so remarkable beyond words, sublime, phenomenal, extraordinary, and excellent. Okay. So this is literally what the Lord wanted me to release to you as his bride, as his beloved remnant. Okay. Now, the Lord said, we are stepping into April. Tomorrow is April the 1st. And April on the Hebrew calendar, according to the ancient Hebrew calendar and the modern Jewish calendar, this is the beginning of the new year, right? And, and they call it the Passover, where the Lord passes over and there's resurrection life. There's a new beginning and everything begins to bud and blossom. So Adar and Nisan, Adar means strength and power and an increase of joy. Nisan means a spring season. Barley is ripening. So everything is now beginning to spring up and spring forth. Spring up, oh well. The wellspring of life that Jesus Christ is, is causing what needs to spring forth in this new beginning of 2024, which is the year of the wow and the year of the now, so many beautiful things are getting ready to spring forth in our lives that are absolutely just phenomenal and remarkable. God is really speaking strong. And I just think it's fascinating, again, that all of this is coming out of this wine bottle that is so prophetic for the bride right now. Okay. So the Lord said, again, we have all been through a long wine press and the Lord is decreeing over his bride. This will be an extraordinary new beginning in your life for my glory. This will be a song of songs, chapter four in 2024. Let me say it again. The Lord is saying this will be a song of songs, chapter four in 2024. We are now entering really 2024 as we enter into April of this month. And the Lord said this will also be a Proverbs 310. Your vats are now going to brim over with my new wine. I have not forgotten. I have not forgotten your selfless love and your sacrificial love unto me and to my people and for my body. And because of your obedience and because of your steadfast love, unmovable and unshakable in my presence. I know that you tripped. I know that you stumbled. I know that you skid your knees sometimes because that weight and that long suffering was painful. But what was painful, who, where there was pain, now I'm going to send my rain, my R-E-I-G-N, Woo, my supreme decree that's coming from my throne room and that which is your inheritance and that which is marked by my blood is going to be delivered to you for my glory. And so again, the Lord says your vats are now going to brim over with my new wine. This is all for my glory. Hallelujah. Now the Lord said, this is so important. Okay. The, the Lord, I was going to open this, okay, before I got on this broadcast and the Lord said, no, he said, I want you to open it on the broadcast because of what I'm saying. So a corkscrew does something specific to the wine that is, that has never been opened. Okay. The corkscrew is to break the seal. I want you to hear the word of the Lord. Okay. The Lord said to me, go to Daniel chapter 8, verse 26. And the vision of the evenings and mornings, which was told is true, right? Which I told you is true. Therefore, seal up the vision for it refers and it concerns to the days in the future. Now, I want to say something very strong. That, in other words, in Daniel chapter 8, verse 26, where basically the angel of the Lord is speaking to Daniel and the spirit of God is saying, listen, 
this concerns the distant future. It's got to be sealed up, meaning there's going to be a long suffering. There's going to be a wait for what I am going to cultivate within you for my glory. So what I got to do is now through the crushing, I'm going to cause this to sit and ferment and it's going to be sealed up for the right generation, the right season that I'm going to serve it to my body, to my people, to the nations. Okay. So what is the Lord saying? You have experienced a long journey of what needed to be sealed up for the distant future. But God is saying he's breaking the sea, Jesus. He's breaking the seal for that which has been sitting and that which the Lord has stored up and that which has been fermenting. Listen, the, the fermentation of the father, the fermentation that brings healing and restoration within us that becomes an outflow to his people, the fermentation that begins to cultivate the pure revelation that begins to be an outflow to the people of God when it's time for it to be served, but it's preserved for years until the Lord's ready to serve it to a specific people. God says, do not Throw your pearls before the shrine. There's something that is so deep that I've done through this wine press, and I'm not going to serve that just to anybody. There is a specific people that I will pour out my spirit upon, that I will mark them. Glory to God. On your mark, get set, go. My forerunners, there is a generation and there is a people that I have marked by my blood. And because of my mark, I am setting everything in motion for them to begin to run, to begin to run the race before my throne of grace at my pace, at my pace. So what God is saying is, Everything that has been sealed up, God is saying now, this is why he said 2024 is the year of the wow and the year of the now for my glory. God is saying when I look. I'm going to put this corkscrew on this bottle of wine. God said this bottle of wine means a new beginning that is extraordinary, that is so sublime and beyond words. You will be beyond words because of the way that God begins to move. Because listen, he has never forgotten about you. He has never forgotten every word that he uttered and he whispered in the darkest seasons of your life. He has never forgotten prophetic words that God sent his sons and daughters to speak into your life. They came in like a whirlwind. They came quickly and they left just as quickly as they came. And sometimes things didn't make sense, but there were prophetic words that were released over your life. And through the years, and through the years and your journey in establishing that true covenant made by fire, the Lord began to reveal the mysteries of those prophetic decrees, of those prophetic words. But some of those prophetic words were preserved for such a time as this. And I'm telling you, God said he's the only one that can break the seal. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, he begins to put a seal upon our hearts. There is a seal of the spirit of the living God. And then the Lord says it is the spirit of the living God that is the only one that can break the seal to pour out the new wine, to pour out that which needs to be delivered that God promised. He said in Isaiah 66, 9, shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery? No, I'm not that kind of God. And I know there's times that you've wrestled and you've not understood my times and seasons in the way that I was seasoning you and refining you. And I was even causing a death to the call, a death to the kingdom mandate. So it's be completely surrendered to the way of my spirit because of the way the spiritual religious spirit caused such a caused such a horrible mold in my house, a mildew in my house. So I had to begin to refine. I had to refine you so that you could learn to dine with me in the way that I refined you and set you free. Woo! 
So there are things now that that which God has preserved, that which he's preserved, those things that he served you in seasons of your life that you thought, oh God, you're going to do this. You're going to do this now. And years and years went by. Oh my God. But the Lord said, I have not forgotten. I have not forgotten any word that I uttered, any word that I decreed over your life. Hey, so see, it is Christ in me. Woo! I want you to see this. The Lord is going to have me put this corkscrew on this wine bottle and it's going to be the time the Lord says do it. But I'm telling you, this is what the Lord is doing in the spiritual realm. He is literally breaking the seal over the, the new wine that he stored up in you, in your life, in your covenant made by fire. And what he's about to pour into your life is going to blow your mind. Because again, God has a specific time and season for that which he wants to serve. That is for the nations. That is for a specific people. Oh, okay. Okay. So, hallelujah. We are going to actually dive in to Song of Songs chapter four, and the Lord's going to have me read the Passion Translation. But before I do this, there was something the Lord led me to do, and this really is so sacred. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you guys watch this, okay? There's two things that you're going to watch on this broadcast. When the Lord had me look up this information, I was going to look up grape stomping because what is so amazing, okay, is in Italy, they have a tradition and other places they have, they have these beautiful, fun traditions where they have their vineyards that when the grapes are ready and ripe, they put them in these big barrels, right? These sometimes they're oak barrels, but they call them like, like, like vats. They put them in these big uh, uh, barrels and then the people, they wash their feet, they roll up their pant legs, and then they step into these barrels and they start to crush the heck out of these grapes. And they have music and they're laughing and they're dancing while they're crushing these grapes. And so listen, that's what happens in the heavenlies. That's what happens during the that wine press, there's a celebration from heaven where our pride is being crushed. Our doubt and unbelief is being crushed. There are so many things that the spirit of God is crushing whoo, so that he can establish his ministry and what he desires to cultivate in this sacred garden that belongs to him, that becomes an outflow to his people to taste and see that the Lord is good to partake of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Whew. Okay. So when I was looking, it was all the Holy Spirit. He's the one that led me. And this is all about the history. You guys, we're going to watch rich history about Israel that I never knew. I never knew this. So I, I'm going to let you guys watch this. And I want you guys to tell me if this is something you have heard before or if you never heard it before, God began to speak to me. And I'm going to pull this up. This is, there is a prophecy from the prophet Amos. And it says over 2,700 years ago, Amos prophesied in God's name. I will bring back the captivity of my people, Israel, and they shall build desolate cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink their wine. This is Amos chapter 9, verse 14. What I did not know is so powerful about the history of how I believe they mentioned the Romans, Rome from Italy, the Romans that literally snatched the vineyards and destroyed the vineyards in Israel, stripped them of their vineyards and began to take everything over to Italy. Okay, because originally 
the finest wine, the sweetest wine, this is so prophetic, came out of the land of Israel. Even though Israel is a desert, God blessed that land to actually have beautiful vineyards. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to share. I'm going to share this right now so you guys can watch this, okay? And thank you again for your grace and your patience because I'm just flowing with the Holy Spirit. Flowing with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to actually put it on here so you guys can see this. Okay. And I'm going to turn this up and make sure that it is on stereo so we don't have any echo issues. We do not want that. Okay. Or I think actually, no, I think it's supposed to be on echo cancellation. I think that's correct. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and play this, you guys. Okay, here we go. In the times of the Bible, the promised land of milk and honey was Judea and Samaria. And the greatest symbol of this promise was the vineyard. For centuries, these regions were covered with vibrant, fertile grapevines. But after the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, the Romans uprooted the vines and took them to Italy. For nearly 2,000 years, no vineyards existed on these mountains. But in the late 1990s, a few Jewish men came here with a goal to change that. Men like Yaakov Berg. 2,000 years ago, Israel known like the best wine country in the ancient world. The Roman Caesars, the Greeks, they brought their best wine, not from Italy, not from French. They brought it from here, from Israel. But for 2,000 years, the land was desert. It was impossible to grow something on those lands. And actually, a lot of people tried, and they couldn't succeed. I was born in Russia. And I came to Israel when I was three years old. It was always my father's dream to touch the land, to grow something. You know, if you were ask my father, do you believe that your son will own a vineyard or a winery in Israel back then in Russia? I mean, he will cry or laugh, but for sure he's not going to believe to that. I remember when we start to plant the vineyards, everything it was rock. We need to drill into the rock in order to plant the vines. Everybody says, all the export says, uh, it's, it's not going to, to work. Nothing will go here. I don't think it's something that we can really understand. It's not that we changed the land, it's not that we brought a new soil or something like that. The land really came back to herself. It's like a dead man that came back to life. The grapes Yaakov harvests to create his wines come from very special places. Elon Moray, where God made his promise to Abraham. The Mount of Blessing, where Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, and Shiloh, where the Ark of the Covenant rested. The harvesters who pick these grapes are neither Israeli nor Jewish. Each year, hundreds of Christian volunteers from around the world travel to Israel to prune the vines and harvest the grapes of Jewish farmers in Judea and Samaria at no cost to the farmers. The Bible promises three main things. First of all, that the Jewish people will come back to their homeland. Second, that the land will come back to us. And from the moment that we came back, it's become a heaven. The third thing, that many people really forgot, they don't see it. But the Bible talk about it many times, all over. That the entire world will come and will participate and will try to help. It's unbelievable. When I see it, I'm crying. The fact that we came back here, okay, but why somebody that lives so far away, thousands of thousands of kilometers from here, would like to know what's going on? 
would like to support, would like to be with us, that we will work together, you know. I think this is the biggest miracle that God gave us in, I don't know, the last 20, 30 years. Everybody that will come to Israel, touch the land and touch the people, it will change his life. Each one of us looking for, for something deeper than just the regular life. I believe and I feel and I know that in Israel, maybe it's the best place on earth to really feel it, to understand it. It's easier than all the rest of the world. To me, Israel, it's the best proof God exists and still acting in our world. I don't think you can find a better proof. I'm Yaakov Berg, and I am Israel. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. You guys, I had to just play that because that was so sacred to me that I didn't know that rich history of literally how the Roman soldiers from Italy just completely stripped out and took all the vineyards and took everything and brought it to Italy when it originally was in Israel. It belonged to Israel. And I think that's so beautiful that the Lord brought that back to me. And then, of course, the prophetic word from prophet Amos when he said, that they shall plant vineyards and drink their wine. And when you hear that, it's so much about, you know, the body of Christ that Jesus says, I am the vine and you are my branches and you will bear the fruit of my spirit. And so it's so important to understand the sacredness of, of growing these vineyards and understanding covenant relationship with Jesus Christ, understanding the beauty of cultivating intimacy that produces the fruit of the Holy Spirit, but the journey of the crushing, the journey of understanding the, the necessary sufferings that we partake of with Christ that produces his new wine, that we are so intoxicated in his perfect love that casts out all fear, that we are so intoxicated with his love that we experience the wonder of his love. We experience the gift of understanding selfless, sacrificial love in so many seasons of our lives because of our covenant with Christ, because of our union with Jesus Christ. It is so holy and so sacred. And so what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and I want to read Song of Songs chapter four, because the Lord said this is the prophetic word for the bride of Christ in 2024. The Lord said it is our Song of Songs four in 2024. So I'm going to read from the Passion Translation and I'm going to just, again, read what the Lord wants me to read from here. So if you guys have a different translation, that's okay. But this is what the Lord wants me to use because, again, it's just more about the intimacy, the language of deep intimacy. So this is where the Lord is speaking, right? Jesus, the, the bridegroom is speaking and he says, listen, my dearest darling, you are so beautiful. You are beauty itself to me. Your eyes are like gentle doves behind your veil. What devotion I see each time I gaze upon you. You are like a sacrifice ready to be offered. My goodness. You are like a sacrifice ready to be offered. When I look at you, this is Jesus speaking to his bride. When I look at you, I see how you have taken my fruit and tasted my word. Your life has become clean and pure, like a lamb washed and newly shorn. You now show grace and balance with truth on display, my truth on display. 
Your lips are as lovely as Rahab's scarlet ribbon, speaking mercy, speaking grace. The words of your mouth are as refreshing as an oasis. Oh my goodness. Listen to the language that Jesus is truly speaking to us, his beloved bride, his remnant, his ecclesia. The intimacy that we have with Jesus is so profound and so powerful and so life-changing. And see, that's what the Lord is saying. For those of you that are on here that need to hear this, you are about to experience the language of the Lord in a way you've never experienced. You are going to experience his love language in so many facets and streams that pour out of his heart from heavenly realms, from his heavenly realms where he's seated in his throne next to the father and where our spirit man is seated in heavenly places with him. And I'll go over that in just a minute. But right now, the Lord wants us to dive in. See this, we remember, we remember, I'm going to go into that deep revelation because again, it is about coming back into a sacred union. Sometimes when we are going through um, years in a covenant marriage, it needs to be it needs to be rekindled. It needs to be set back on fire because so many things in life want to put out that fire, want to rob us of having such a passion for Christ that we're constantly wanting to be in his presence, wanting to feel his touch, wanting to feel his embrace, wanting to hear him whisper in our hearts, wanting to experience that intimacy heart to heart and spirit to spirit. So this is so sacred and I really want to encourage because I'm telling you song of songs is so deep and so intimate. So let's look again at what the way Jesus is speaking to us. And as the Lord is speaking to us in this way, this is how he was speaking from his heart. This is how he was serenading us on the cross when he was literally being crushed and, and, I mean, he was literally, his flesh was being ripped apart. He was not recognizable because of the way they ripped his flesh from his body. His, his body was crushed, but not his bones. And I'm going to go into that, um, but just bear with me. So listen, the way that the Lord is speaking here came out of his heart through his ultimate sacrifice, atoning for our sinful nature, bringing us back into oneness, bringing us back into a bond, a union that is unbreakable, where we it, we come back to the divine nature of God, where the Lord speaks and says, let us make man in our own image and our own likeness. Okay, so we, I want to continue to read, and I really encourage you, even after this, that you really sit with Jesus, that you sit with Jesus and you say, Lord, I am so ready. I am so ready to go deeper with you in my covenant, this intimacy. I need it rekindled. I need it reignited. Glory to God. And that's also what the Lord is saying. We are experiencing a divine reset of passion and intimacy with the lover of our soul. We are experiencing that divine reset where God is restoring the power of having a passion for Christ. He's rekindling that fire and that intimacy. Glory to God, where things begin became dull and 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 bland no the lord's restoring his passion our passion for him so that we can experience such a weightier passion of christ that begins to just oh my goodness woo us and cause us to want to do nothing but spend time in his presence and hear what he has to say from his heart to us and for his people so let me go back again. The Lord says we are in Song of Songs chapter four in 2024 with the Lord. OK, so the Lord says again, and this is still in verse one. You are like a sacrifice ready to be offered. When we understand the intimacy of coming into union with him through the through his body and his blood, we 
go to such a deep understanding of what selfless and sacrificial, like what is so necessary that the moment, thank you, Lord, I'm going to, I'm going to just flow with the Holy Spirit right now. And I'm going to continue to read, but see the moment that we say, I do the moment that, so on the cross, here it is the moment that he said it is finished. And the moment that and I, I, I thank you, Holy Spirit, just have your way. See, the moment that it was finished on the cross, the moment that that Roman soldier pierced him on the side and water and blood poured out of his side, that was the moment that the father said, look, my son, now I can present to you your bride in the earth. Now I can present to you your bride. Now I can bring you, bring her into covenant with you, into a covenant made by fire. And and this is so holy because what's so amazing. Mm, thank you, Jesus. What it means to live, move and have our being in Christ is just like a woman who begins to take the name of her husband, of her bridegroom. And see, this is so different than what we see in modern culture today, where all of a sudden the, the woman still keeps her name, but only takes the last name of her husband. Let me tell you something. The Lord began to speak to me in my own personal journey with my future husband. Okay. That he made known to me. This is between me and Jesus. And I will be going deep and speaking on kingdom marriage in ways that you've not heard before. But God has not allowed me to. He hasn't given me the green light for that. But I want to say something. When the Lord presented to me who the man that he has for me, he literally put a ring on my finger and he called me by his full name. See, before there was the, the Me Too movement and the feminist movement that came out of the 19th century, what happened was a woman understood that when she became wed to her husband, that she took his full name, his identity. Oh my God, that she took his identity, that it wasn't her name at all. She was Mrs. Uh -huh. Uh, and and the first and the middle and the last name of her husband. And the reason this happened was because it was connected to covenant with Christ. So before that 19th century where they had that feminist movement, the reason this happened was because these women just felt like they lost their identity. Oh my goodness, is this not so prophetic with the world, with the, with the church, with the lukewarm church? There was a people that said... I, 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 I feel like I lost my own identity. Now, now it's all about my husband. Oh my God. Now it's all about my husband. I'm taking on his full name. Well, listen, the understanding of this is so powerful. And it goes back to Genesis when the Lord began to, to, to put Adam to sleep. And the Lord said, I got to take a rib out of Adam and form the wool man. And the wool man is going to be his helpmate. So she came out of man. And so covenant is no longer is it about your identity. It is about the identity of your bridegroom. Mm. It is about the identity of Christ, the person of Christ, the nature of Christ, the ways of Christ. You are now living and abiding in him because we are his rib we are we were he was pierced on his side so that the father could bring forth the bride that that's oh it's so deep okay it's so so deep it's so so deep so see everything about covenant marriage and communion again which means come union is there is a fusion and in that few see the, the lord is not the author of confusion see there is a fusion and now all of a sudden we become hidden in christ because we take on this full identity now we are in covenant if we're not in a blood covenant with jesus we do not take on his full identity see it goes back to genesis Two, and you go through 21 through 24 when all of a sudden it talks about what it talks about the Lord saying again he took rib out of Adam he put him to sleep to form the woman the bride okay holy I'm, I'm probably going all over the place right now but listen 
We're, we're, we're going back into Song of Songs chapter four because the Lord said this is the word for his bride in 2024. And it is so sacred and it is so deep. So again, see everything that's worldly in the church that is that is that is from a religious system doesn't want to take on the full identity of Christ Jesus doesn't live and abide and have their being in Christ Jesus so a covenant made by fire is now it's like when Jesus said when you see me you see my father so when I say, when you see me, you see Christ in me, the hope of glory. I have taken on my, my, I have taken his, on his identity, who he is. I abide in him. It is all about him. It is all about um, submitting and surrendering and serving my husband, my bridegroom. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But see, it's so sacred because it's not about being enslaved. It is this chemistry. It is understanding that when I come into a union with Jesus and we are one, now I receive my inheritance that comes right out of heavenly places. Now I understand what I get to receive and walk in in heavenly realms and heavenly places seated with Christ in Christ. Woo, Jesus. Okay. Holy Spirit, thank you for having your way. All right. So I want to continue. I want to continue. But see, the Lord had me go there for just a moment. Because again, there are those of you, 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 the, the way that you're going to come into a, a fresh communion, a fresh communion. Oh my goodness. Is you're going to experience the language of Jesus in the way you've not experienced before. Like when he whispers words into your heart, into your spirit that literally make you come alive, that cause you to weep because he is the essence of perfect love. And it is so holy. It is so holy that when Jesus begins to speak to his bride, my goodness, we go into encounter after encounter with him. We all of a sudden begin to step into heavenly realms with him because that is where we are seated with our bridegroom, with our husband. Okay. Hallelujah. So whew, that's where I'm going back to in Song of Song chapter four, when, G when Jesus is basically speaking to his bride and he's saying, you are like a sacrifice ready to be offered because now you live a selfless sacrificial life in me, that you serve me, that you walk with me, that you are in a true union with me, that I, through you, can bring salvation to so many that i can deliver so many that i can heal and restore so many that i can empower and disciple so many because you are walking and abiding in me in the vine and you are yielded and surrendered to the way that i want to serve that i want to reach the nations Oh, glory to God. Again, see a covenant, a, a true union with Christ, following Christ, walking with Christ, abiding in Christ is not about everything that Jesus can give us. It's not about anything materialistic. There are blessings that God just gives us because we're in the earth realm, but that's not. The bride only wants to fulfill the desires of her husband's heart, her bridegroom. See, that's what happens. That's that chemistry. She is only desiring to fulfill what's in her husband's heart. That's Esther. That's why she was granted favor. That's why she was given the scepter because she was the one that said, I want to know what the king desires from his heart, what pleases his heart. That is the bride. That is the power of true communion. It is way deeper than just being rescued from sinful nature. It is completely destroying the sinful nature to cultivate the divine nature of his heart within us. And my goodness, to go in so many places 
from heavenly realms that we could never experience or never go without abiding in him and pursuing his heart. It's so sacred. So he says, when I look at you, I see how you have taken my fruit and tasted my word. Your life has become clean and pure, like a lamb washed and newly shorn. You now show grace and balance with truth on display, my truth. Your lips are as lovely as Rahab's scarlet ribbon. Speaking mercy, speaking grace. The words of your mouth are as refreshing as an oasis. What pleasure you bring to me. I see your blushing cheeks opened like the halves of a pomegranate showing through your veil of tender meekness. When I look at you, I see your inner strength so, so stately and strong. You are as secure as David's fortress. Your virtues and grace cause a thousand famous soldiers to surrender to your beauty. And really what the Lord is saying is surrendering to my spirit within you. Woo! my authority within you. He says, your pure faith and love rest over your heart as you nurture those who are yet infants. He's speaking, he's speaking to his beloved bride. And then the bride responds back to her lover, to her lover, to her bridegroom. I've made up my mind because of the way that you've wooed me, because of the way that you've rescued me, because of the way that you have just poured your love into me, because of the way that you've protected me, because of the way that you desire me, you desire me, you desire to be one with me until the darkness disappears and the dawn has fully come, in spite of shadows and fears, I will go to the mountaintop with you, the mountain of suffering love and the hill of burning incense. Yes, I will be your bride. Mm. Whew. And the Lord responds, the bridegroom responds, every part of you is so beautiful, my darling. Perfect is your beauty without flaw within. Now you are ready, my bride, to come with me as we climb the highest peaks together. Come with me through the archway of trust. We will look down from the crest of the glistening mounts and from the summit of our sublime sanctuary, from the lion's den and the leopard's lair. For you reach into my heart. With one flash of your eyes, I am undone by your love, your love for me your desire for me, your desire to serve me, your desire to please me, your desire to worship me, to praise me, to exalt my name. <sighs> my beloved, my equal, my bride, you leave me breathless. I am overcome by merely a glance from your worshiping eyes. For you have stolen my heart. I am held hostage by your love. Meaning, I will never leave nor forsake you. That's what that means when Jesus is saying, I am held hostage by your love. And by the graces of righteousness shining upon you. I never want to leave your side. You are my bride. I am with you for all eternity. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. How satisfying to me, my equal, my bride. Your love is my finest wine. Your love for me is my finest wine. That is so deep. And see, this is why the Lord is speaking of how he is breaking a seal. And he is causing such a new wine our vats to brim over with his new wine in the way that we've dined with him in his sufferings, in the way that we've sacrificed, we've become a living sacrifice for our Lord, for our Savior. And he says again, he says, mm, 
Your love is my finest wine. Intoxicating and thrilling. Let me tell you something. I am prophesying over you that the way that Jesus is going to literally break that seal and he's going to pour out the new wine that has come from your sacrifice unto him, your covenant made by fire with him. The Lord is saying now you're going to experience what is intoxicating and thrilling in the way that I encounter you and serve you this new wine that I am. Glory to God and your sweet perfumed praises. So exotic, so pleasing. Your loving words are like honey to me. Your tongue releases milk and honey for I find the promised land flowing within you. In other words, I see my spirit within you. I see the fruit of my spirit within you for I find the promised land flowing within you. The fragrance of your worshiping love surrounds you with scented robes of white. But I want to go back because I just heard the Holy Spirit say this to me. See, hmm, Jesus Christ is our promised land and we, his bride is his promised land. His promised land. We are his promised land because the father promised Jesus through his ultimate sacrifice that the father would give him a bride. And so that is why the Lord says, I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. So Christ in me, the hope of glory. So the Jesus is your promised land. He's my promised land. But we, in a covenant made by fire, are the Lord's promised land. That's why he said he's our land Lord. He's our guard and guardian. He's the one that is the gardener in the sacred garden of our hearts. Yeah, we are his promised land from the Father, God the Father. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's wrecking me right now. We are his promised land from the father. The moment that Roman soldier pierced him on his side after he took his last breath there, the father said, now I'm going to give you your promised land. You will be able. Whoo. You will be able to do great, great, great works, who mighty works, you will be able to pour out your spirit. My goodness, we become the body of Christ. Jesus. Okay, so then he says, the fragrance of your worshiping love surrounds you with scented robes of white. My darling bride, my private paradise, fastened to my heart, a secret spring that no one else can have are you. My bubbling fountain hidden from public view. Wow. Okay. <sighs> wow. I want to say this again because this is so sacred. This is for the true, pure bride of Christ that does not want the accolades of man, that does not want um, to be uh, promoted in the way that so many desire to be promoted and to be seen, to, to, to say, oh, I want to have this successful ministry or, you know, I want people to see all these things that God is doing through me and, and in my life. Now, I want to say something. This is so holy. The true bride of Christ, the Lord says it right here. He says, my darling bride, my private paradise fastened to my heart. And this is in verse 12. He says, a secret spring that no one else can have are you, a bubbling fountain hidden from public view. Do you understand what Jesus is saying? So this, this dismantles 
the 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 lies of the enemy this dismantles a false responsibility to make you feel like oh my goodness i'm supposed to do all these great things i'm supposed to have a huge ministry all this stuff blah 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 no the true bride of Christ, she loves to be in the secret place. She loves to be in the secret place. And it, like the Lord says, what you do in secret, the Father will reward publicly. But it'll be strategically by the Spirit of God that will glorify Him in the most beautiful, majestic ways. But see, the bride loves privacy with her husband, her bridegroom. And the Lord always does the greatest works behind public view, not in public view. Hallelujah. I just love this so much. Look at how Jesus is speaking to us. My bubbling fountain hidden from public view. What a perfect partner to me now that I have you. Your inward life is now sprouting, bringing forth fruit, my fruit. What a beautiful paradise unfolds within you. When I'm near you, I smell aromas of the finest spice for many clusters of my exquisite fruit now grow within your inner garden. Mm. Here are the nine pomegranates of passion, henna from heaven, spicknard so sweet, saffron shining, fragrant calamus from the cross, sacred cinnamon branches of scented woods, myrrh like tears from a tree, and aloe as eagles ascending. You are a fountain of gardens, a well of living water springs up from within you, like a mountain brook flowing into my heart. Let me tell you, Jesus is the greatest poet. He is the greatest poet that knows how to serenade a heart and woo a heart into oneness, into union with him. And see, lastly, the bride responds because of this intense, intoxicating love that flows from the very heart of Christ. This is so sacred. And she says, awake, O north wind, awake, O south wind, breathe on my garden with spirit wind, stir up the sweet spice of your life within me, spare nothing as you make me your fruitful garden, hold nothing back until I release your fragrance. Come walk with me as you walked with Adam in your paradise garden and come taste the fruits of your life within me. See, there was so much in the Song of Songs, chapter four, that the Lord is going to unfold, that the Lord is going to manifest in your covenant. And for some of you, it is a renewed covenant. It is a revived covenant. The Lord is restoring passion. The Lord is restoring that fire. The Lord is restoring that deep intimacy, glory to God, that return to your first love. I am the lover of your soul. And so that is what the Lord wanted me to share. Thank you, Jesus. And what I feel to do right now, for those of you that are on here, hallelujah. I want to read this and we're going to we're going to partake of communion. OK, we're going to do it together. I know we've been on for about an hour and then I will go back. I will go into some other places as the Holy Spirit leads me. And again, if you feel that you need to leave, if you have other things, I, I totally bless you and I understand. But if you if you can stay for a little bit longer, we're going to do communion in the next few moments. OK, so. The Lord is speaking. The Lord, I'm going to I'm going to quote everything from the the last supper that Jesus said to his disciples and we are going to partake. We are going to partake. Glory to God. But I want to read this because this is so important. So, the word wait, the word wait is actually a Hebrew word that means kava. And it means intertwine, twisting and binding, making you unbreakable, becoming fused, a true bond that is unbreakable. It is a marriage. And so everything that we've had, every every season we've had to wait on the Lord. Every season we've had to wait 
years and years and years for what the Lord whispered in our heart, in our spirit, man, the way that he gave us glimpses of what's to come. What he has done is he has established a truly surrendered life, a truly surrendered heart unto the Lord. He has established a covenant made by fire that has produced such a a, a intoxicating, potent wine that comes out of that wine press. And so this is so, so beautiful. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. So what I want to do, let me see if this is where the Lord wants to go. I want to just take a moment. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's so much. There's so much here. I just want to take a minute, you guys. I want to wait and see if the Lord wants me to release this before we take communion. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Whoo! Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so what I want to share with you that is so beautiful is... Again, the power of communion through the through his body that was broken and his blood that was shed to bring to for, to cause us to be spiritually wed. Thank you, Holy Spirit, how you said that my body that was broken and my blood that was shed would cause you to become spiritually wed to me, my bride coming into a union. But what is so amazing is this. What God says, he is the redeemer, the redeemer. So he redeems what belongs to him, what belongs to God, the father, what belongs to God, the son and God, the Holy Spirit. And so what is really powerful is this. Jesus says, right, I purchased you with my blood. I paid the price that no one could pay for you. So what happens when we come to Christ and we come into a blood covenant? He does what is called a repossession. He repossesses what belongs to him. This is so holy because we, okay, it's like, let me, let me say it this way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to stop a minute because I don't want to get ahead of myself. Hallelujah. He paid the price, so we are his treasured possessions. So this death to life, as we've known it, is all about our creator repossessing what belongs to him. He is our redeemer, like Hosea who married the prostitute and redeemed her with silver. Repossession is when the rightful owner takes back what is theirs. When you can't pay the price for it, it's so valuable. The cost is so great. You can't purchase it. So now it becomes repossessed. Okay. The moment that Jesus shed his blood for this union, he comes to repossess what belongs to him. And so now there is a powerful fusion. He destroys the sinful nature. That is where Lucifer, Satan, has his, he rules through the sinful nature of man. That is where Satan has established his kingdom, the prince of the air in this fallen world. So he can only rule through sinful nature. So Jesus now destroys the sinful nature. And now we have a blood transfusion. Now we become fused with our creator. Now there is a new clear fusion, like a nuclear fusion, like an explosion. This is so powerful. Now we come back into oneness and union with Jesus. Now we cleave to our beloved. We cleave. We cleave to the spirit of the living God. 
And through the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is our help mate. The Holy Spirit is the one that we now, we come into this amazing union through the power of the blood and the power of the spirit. We are born by the spirit and washed in the blood. And so this is so, so holy. So again, basically it is a repossession. The Lord says, to the enemy, you know what? That belongs to me. That son and that daughter, that's my treasured possession. And I'm going to repossess what belongs to me because I paid the price. Hallelujah. Okay. So what I want to do, you guys, glory to God, glory to God. We are going to do this. I am going to do something special. In the beginning of this broadcast, I spoke about, um, asking permission uh, to just one of these amazing warrior brides. She is such a warrior and she releases the frequencies of heaven, the ancient sounds from heaven. And I just absolutely adore who she is and what she pours out. It is the new wine. She pours out what is an outflow from her intimacy or passionate love for the lover of her soul. And so this again is what she released this Friday for the first time. And so we are going to do this. I am going to, you guys, please say a prayer because I don't know what's going to happen when I break this, when I, when I break this seal off of this wine. Okay. Um, so you guys can see it. I got, I got a towel here. If you guys need just a moment to get your, well, they call it elements if you to get your bread and to get your wine or for some of you, you might use juice. There's no judgment, nothing like that. But the Lord just again, it's so sacred to use wine because of the revelation of it, because of the understanding of everything that Jesus went through, br brutally crushed and bruised and beaten. My God, Jesus. OK, so we are going to take this now. I am, I'm going to, I'm going to pop this cork again. It's all about breaking the seal for the wine to flow. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Now what I think I want to do. Okay. Hold on guys. Oh boy. Lord, I thank you for helping me do this. <laughs> Woo! Okay, it's coming. Oh, see, boy, it's such a, it's, mm -mm. this is, this is the good wine. This is from Israel. For those of you, if you're just joining me, here it comes. This, the seal's going to break. The cork is coming out. I just pray it doesn't shoot across on my computer screen. <laughs> okay, and then we're, I'm going to play something special for you guys while we do this. This is so sacred. This is not easy to, to pull, to, but I think it's the best way to do it. So it doesn't. Um... Okay, wait. I got to keep doing it. You know, the Lord is serious about preserving his wine for the right generation. And those who truly are in love with him. Okay. Whew. Again, this is some fine wine, you guys. Oh, glory to God. Here we go. Here we go. <gasps> oh. oh, thank you, Jesus. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So, hallelujah, you guys. Oh, my goodness. You guys, this smells so sweet and, oh. Woo! It's going to be a sweet outpouring. Oh my goodness. A sweet outpouring of the Lord over his bride. Woo! Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, you guys, do you have, I want to wait a few minutes. We're going to start in just a minute, but I've got to, I've got to put this on so you guys can Take this time. I, we're going to worship the Lord and then we are going to partake of our communion with him. Okay. And thank you, Jesus. Whew. Okay. Hold on. Here we go. I'm going to have to remove this one. 
and then I'm going to add this one. Okay, share screen. Woo, okay. Oh, wow. Oh, you guys, I'm just like so wrecked right now. Just get ready. I'm just going to tell you, um, we're going to play this and then I'm going to let it go on repeat again as we partake of this communion with the Lord. And um, but there's also something else because this is called we remember we remember. And so the Lord is going to speak over every place where the enemy from the demonic realm wanted to dismember. And that word dismember is very strong. And let me just pull this up right now. And then we're going to play this. Okay. This is so important that you hear this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit there's so much. I just, I'm just kind of overwhelmed in a beautiful way because there's so much to cover when it comes to really communion with the Lord. It's so deep and so sacred. And um, so let me pull this up here. Thank you, Lord. There it is. Okay. So when we remember what Jesus has done for us on the cross, the way he shed his blood for us. Then, then he, and then now we have the resurrection life, the resurrection life that abides within us. Now we have the power and authority of Jesus Christ. It's so holy. But again, for some of us, when you, when you're taking communion, you ask the Lord, Jesus is there any place in my body, soul, or spirit where the demonic realm came to dismember, to dismember? And listen to what this means, because it means break up as an end relationship. It means to divide, disturb the union, disconnect. Okay, this is so important. Remember means to bring something back into a union, right? Bringing, bringing that divine connection, everything coming back into harmony. It is a fusion, right? It is a fusion. Satan is the con artist. So Satan is the one who is the author of confusion, con fusion. But the spirit of God brings forth fusion something that is fused together is a is one you can't tell it apart because it is so in harmony it is in sync so we want to ask the lord and i want you to take this very seriously you ask the spirit of god as the lord has me play this you ask the lord say jesus where show me the places that have been dismembered those places in my covenant with you, in my relationship with you. Lord God, I thank you that you are remembering me. You know, the word Zechariah in Hebrew means God has remembered. God has remembered you. That word is so powerful. God has restored his union with you. God has restored the places where the enemy caused a disturbance, who wanted to disturb that union, who wanted to disturb that intimacy. Oh, so we are taking authority, but we are coming out of brokenness to say, Lord, I thank you that you are restoring the fullness of a true union with you, body, soul, and spirit, that my inheritance for what you did for me on the cross, you didn't just atone for my sinful nature. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to say that together as a body. Lord, thank you that you wash me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness and that you have forgiven me of any sin. And thank you, Jesus, that your blood covers a multitude of sins. And this is is a new beginning in my life with you as you are restoring areas that have been disturbed by demonic influence or demonic attacks. Oh, Jesus. So 
the union taking communion is all about being remembered see we remember what jesus has done for us and because of that and how we have that intimacy then god says see now i'm coming and i'm gonna remember you i'm gonna remember your sacrifices i'm gonna remember your faithfulness i'm gonna remember all these things but i'm also coming to remember those things that the enemy came to disturb in our union Woo! Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And there's some other things that we're going to talk about, but thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Let me pull this up, guys. Thank you for your patience because this is so new for me. Okay, we're going to read. I'm going to read Matthew 26, 26 through 28 in just a minute. But I want to play this because I want you guys to be so blessed. This is so, so holy. So thank you guys for joining and, and staying with me in this to receive this blessing. And also, as you feel led by the Spirit of God, Everything is in the description of this broadcast, our communion service. But if you feel led by the Spirit of God, you can sow a kingdom seed. And I want you to title it, Remember. Remember me. Remember me. This is all about the union. All about the union. And what God is doing in this season of your life. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to your name. Woo. This is my body. Woo. This is my blood. This is the record of what I did for love. This is communion. Drink in the wine. We know you made I am the way, the truth. We know as I am. The immortal life.
the cup and the bread. The lamb slain before time. I am the light of heaven. Send me, Lord, the Father's Thank you, Jesus. Okay, you guys, we're going to go ahead and have this communion with our King of glory. 
Matthew 26, 28 through 20 or 26 through 28. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread. He took the bread. He blessed and broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body. So we are going to break the bread. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for atoning for our sins. Thank you for what you did because you are so in love with us that your body was bruised and broken and beaten and crushed, Jesus, for the sake of bringing forth your bride, of bringing forth a true intimate covenant marriage, a union fused together, becoming one. Thank you, Jesus, that Lord God, you took upon you every disease, every curse, every sin. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that through the power of your blood, all has been cleansed, all has been healed. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that by your stripes we were healed and we partake of your body that was broken. You are our daily bread and we receive our inheritance. We receive our inheritance in Christ for what you did for us. We thank you that you are our healer, that you are the one who heals our physical body, who restores our physical body as you heal and restore and mend our soul and our spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, his disciples saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for the many, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that we have a blood covenant with you. That, Lord, when you shed your blood on the cross at Calvary, you made a public display of Satan's defeat, of the demonic realm's defeat. You put them under your feet and made them your prisoners. We thank you for the power of your blood. We praise you, Lord God, that we are healed, that we are restored, that we are empowered by the spirit of the Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. We ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that the power of your blood would wash us and cleanse us of any unrighteousness, even things that we are not made aware of, that we are not conscious of. Lord, you know and you see all things for nothing is hidden from your light. You are the light of the world. And we thank you right now that the power of your blood is washing and cleansing us of all all unrighteousness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that the power of your blood is bringing healing body, soul, and spirit. Thank you for the power of your blood is bringing forth restoration where restoration needs to be established. Thank you, Lord, that you are the resurrection life and that which needs to be resurrected in our lives is being resurrected through the power of your shed blood in the name of Jesus. Lord, whatever needs to be resurrected, you are the risen son and we are your earthen vessels that revolve around the risen son that you are. And we thank you that the power of your blood is commanding life 
to emerge. Lord God, whatever things that have been dead, whatever things that have been dormant because of the tactics and devices and schemes of the evil one, we thank you in the name of Jesus that you are bringing forth life to everything that has been dormant or dead. We say now in the name of Jesus, it will spring forth because of the power of your blood. Lord God, I thank you. Whatever needs to be activated in our lives is now activated through the power of your blood. Thank you, Jesus, that you begin to activate and begin to bring to life a deeper a deeper intimacy in our hearts with you, a deeper devotion in our hearts with you, a deeper true surrender and submission to the way of your spirit, to the plans that you have for us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the power of your blood. Thank you, Lord, that in this communion where God any place that there has been anything dismembered that we are not discernful of Lord that through the power of your shed blood that you are re Membering, that you are restoring, that you are dismantling any area the enemy caused a disturbance. Lord God, that you are releasing a holy disturbance. And I praise you in the name of Jesus. You're bringing everything back into harmony, back into union, back into oneness with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the power of your blood that brings forth a true union with you, a oneness with you a deep intimacy with you. Thank you, Lord God, through the power of your blood that we enter into heavenly places. Thank you, Lord God, because of the power of your blood, we were crucified in Christ and we were raised from the dead and resurrected in Christ Jesus. And we are seated in heavenly places in you, Christ, our King, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer. Now, Jesus, through the power of your shed blood and through the power of your Holy Spirit, thank you that we begin to access heavenly places that we've never stepped foot into before. Lord God, that we begin to step into the places that we need to receive those things that we need to go forth in the fullness of our calling in Christ Jesus, that we need to carry out our calling. So thank you, Lord God, through the power of your blood, we have access into the storehouses of heaven. We have access, Lord God. We are sovereign citizens of your kingdom in heaven, your governing rule. And we thank you in the name of Jesus that you restore a weightier outpouring of your presence, that God, that you begin to come into every act atmosphere and that you begin to take your rightful place as king, the, your rightful place to rule and to reign, body, soul, and spirit. Lord God, through the power of your blood, O King of glory, come in and remember those things that were dismembered by the enemy. Reestablish your rule and your supremacy. Reestablish your governing rule in the name of Jesus. Oh, she through the power of your blood. Thank you, Jesus, that we have access to our destiny scrolls in heavenly places. Lord, I thank you in the name of the Lord. Woo! She say, Lord, we are gonna, if you haven't uh drank already, I'm gonna go ahead and partake. But I could feel the spirit of God wanting me to go into these places to decree this over you in your blood covenant with Jesus Christ, the King of glory. Hallelujah. Hmm. Oh, glory to God. Whew. I want to go ahead and play this one more time. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And we're just going to flow with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let me go ahead, you guys, and put this on one more time. We're going to put it on in the background. I just want you to take a moment with the Lord and just really thank you, Jesus. This is my body. I want you to take a moment. Close your eyes. 
begin to receive. This is the Lord my wants to speak to you. He's about to take us into places in heavenly realms of his glory that we've never stepped into before, that we've never accessed before. This He's about to bring a greater increase of his anointing upon our lives for that which he's appointed and called us to do. Mark five. What I did for love. Woo. Just begin to thank this him is for remembering you, bringing forth a strong union that cannot be disturbed by the demonic realm. Drink in the wine. I am the way, the truth. There are ancient doors from heaven that are being opened wide for the bride. Ancient doors in heaven's places that are being opened up wide for the bride. I have lost. 
that they will be all be one just as you and I are one as you are in me father and I am in you may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me hallelujah okay thank you Jesus whoo you guys oh my goodness there is so many things that I have here sitting before me that I was listening to with the Lord and I feel what the Lord is saying right now. I feel like what the Lord is saying, just because um, we have been on for two hours now, this is what I hear the Lord saying. So there is a deep place that I wanted to dive into with you guys concerning this communion. And that is all about when Jesus was on the cross and because it was on the high holy day and the Jewish people said they did not want any bodies on the cross during that high holy day, which was about Passover, right? That the Roman soldiers would literally break the bones of those who were being, who were crucified on the cross. They were not, they didn't die yet. Sometimes they would be there for three days. And what's interesting is it said the Roman soldiers would break the legs of those on the cross to quicken their death and then to remove them off the cross. But the Roman soldier could not break any bones on Jesus. They were they were not able to do that because the Lord allowed the Roman soldier to see that Jesus already took his last breath. And so instead the the father god the father had ended up really influencing that roman soldier to take his spear and pierce the side of jesus where this represents now now lord you are bringing forth my bride that she is my rib 
and she will be bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another broadcast, and that broadcast is going to be about the bone of my bone, understanding that not one bone was broken in the Lord during that crucifixion. And it's so powerful. We're going to talk about the bones, which represent the systems, the rulership of the Lord, the government of God. But I feel like on this broadcast, um, I feel like I need to end it here. And then we're going to do another broadcast. And it's going to be about this because this is so deep. And I believe that as we took communion and what I was seeing in the spirit, we're about to step into heavenly places. Our feet have never tread. Our feet have never tread because the Lord never led us there. But we're about to step into places. We're about to be led by the spirit of God. Jesus is about to take his bride into places in heaven that she's never encountered before. And it's going to be so powerful. And it is all about it is greater, a greater depth of understanding the mysteries of his government, of his rulership and his supremacy there's something very deep and all i can tell you is i want to weep because of it because i can see the bride and i can see jesus really taking her by surprise in the places he's about to take her into he's inviting his bride into a place that has been sealed up it's been sealed up and see the lord said that's why I've, i broke the seal concerning what I promised you for my glory. So the Lord's about, he's pouring out. He said, now your, your, your vats are going to brim over with my new wine. I'm about to overtake you because it's time to break that seal and deliver to you what I promised. This is the hour. This is the hour. But also that's not just personal in our lives, but there's something very deep that is happening with the bride of Christ corporately. And the Lord is saying, I'm about to take you into a place that has been sealed up, but now I'm breaking that seal for, for, for you to see, I'm going to reveal mysteries that you have not um, taken hold of. And the Lord is about to do something deep when it comes to his governing authority and his rule and his supremacy. And it's something that we've not yet experienced, but it is coming forth and I'm going to hear, I hear the Lord saying this. Thank you, Jesus. He said, it's coming forth, coming out of this new, this next solar eclipse, which is supposed to take place on April the 8th. Okay. April the 8th, right of this year. And April represents what? The Adar and Nisan, which is all about the strength and power of the Lord that brings an increase of joy to his beloved. And also, again, it's the new beginning and it's the barley ripening. And so there's something deep about the harvest, but also the Lord saying, I mean, I'm seeing a vision of the Lord. I just see his bare feet and I see him literally walking his bride into this place that she's never experienced, never seen, never. And I say never. And this is because the Lord is about to break this seal to let her see and partake of what has been kept hidden all this time and it is the ancient it is an ancient door it is an ancient path and this here is connected i hear the lord saying to what's about to take place on april the 8th where this eclipse now i've talked about this before where the lord spoke to me and he began to say the word aleph because he said to me last year august 1 august 1 and he kept saying the word one instead of first and the Lord said, look up one in the Hebraic alphabet. And it says Aleph. And the symbol of Aleph is literally the symbol that is taking place with this next solar eclipse. It is literally the Hebraic symbol of Aleph. Aleph. And that symbol crosses over to all those cities called Nineveh throughout the states of this nation. And then, of course, interesting about the state of Kentucky, about the Ark of the of the Covenant. And so what is about to happen with the bride is so weighty and so powerful. 
because this is where the killer whales coming out of the womb of the bride are going to be so mind blowing to the Western culture of the church. Things are about to happen that is going to blow the minds of so many that have literally, I hear the Lord saying, undermined the bride that have not taken the bride seriously. There's about to be something that is breaking out of the belly of his bride like never before. And it's because of this year of 2024, where the Lord has not opened just an open door, but an ancient door that was sealed up for many generations. Oh my God. Hey! So you guys, I hear the Lord. I'm going to stop here. I do want to ask you for those of you that participated in this communion service, that you are prayerful about sowing a seed, a communion seed for embracing this new beginning and what the Lord is saying. And also, if you sow that communion seed, I want you to title that seed, Remember Me. Because I'm telling you, this is holy, this is sacred, and the Spirit of God is absolutely going to move mighty in your life because of what he is now remembering. There are things the Lord is remembering in me. There's a there's a, a depth of this union and this nuclear fusion, like the word nuclear fusion. You guys heard me talk about that revelation years ago. That is explosive because it's chemistry with our creator. It is a bond that is powerful, that, that is explosive with the passion of Christ. Oh, okay. So you guys, I will be uh, scheduling the broadcast where I'm going to go deep into this. I feel the spirit of God heavy. Now I understand why he wanted me to do this communion. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Now I understand why he wanted me to do this communion. And I love you guys. And I pray that you were so blessed. Please let me know how this has, has really um, touched your heart and impacted you. And please, for those of you that were so blessed by Laura C. Her name is Laura C. Her YouTube channel is called Laura C. Worship. And I she also has a Facebook page. But she is the real deal. And she really connects with the frequency of heaven through the spirit of God, through the Holy Spirit. It is so, so sacred. And so um, I really want you to be able to just bask in that place in your alone time with Jesus. I believe he wants to take you deeper. I've been listening to it and the Lord's been doing something in me. Oh my God. So I love you guys. And um, I will be, like I said, thank you for your grace. There was so much that the Lord had for me to, to pour out, but what he wanted for tonight was released. And so again, I'm going to do um, a continuance of this and we're going to dive deep into the bones, the bones of Jesus that were not broken. Everyone who's crucified on the cross, their bones are broken, but God is, is speaking whoo, loud from his glory cloud. Hey. Okay, I love you guys, and I will go ahead and get that um, get that up so that you guys can see uh, the next date that I will do um, a continuance on this um, communion service, okay? I love you so much, and thank you so much for your love, your prayers, and your financial support of the Cimarron tribe and what the Lord is doing here. It is holy and it is sacred. Hallelujah, and thank you guys for being patient with what God has been doing in my life. He's been healing me. He's been remantling me. You know, you guys who really um, are connected with Nate and Christy Johnson with the wild ones. You guys see, I got wild one over. I've had that over there since 2019. But but how he's been speaking, right, about what we've been walking through. It's so in line with everything the Lord's been speaking to me. But he goes into a deeper depth, which I love about him. And so we're all going through this detox, this soul detox, this healing and remantling of the Lord, like the eagle that's being reborn. And it is so holy. So please be patient with all of us who are true leaders in the body of Christ, who God has really uh, established ministries online or in, in, you know, that we just, we're not perfect and we make mistakes. And for me, I'm still learning about running an online ministry. So Hallelujah. I love you guys. Bless you, Tiffany, Daniela, joy of life. And is it hello? Hello. 
Hello, Hilani Zion. I love that. That's a that's a beautiful name. And um, Laura and Pink and Perlita, I think. Oh, and Crystal. Thank you guys so much for joining. And Kelly and Vicky, all of you that are here, thank you for um, sharing this with those the Holy Spirit leads you to share with, okay? God bless you guys. Happy Resurrection Sunday. And of course, I will be um, preparing something for Passover, which is the date in the Hebraic calendar and what the Lord wants me to do during that time as well. So glory to God. I love you guys. Shalom. And I will see you. Um, another time this week.